Hey guys, this video is all about guitar picks. And I should just state, this video is not sponsored in any way whatsoever by any of the manufacturers of the picks that I mentioned. In this video, I'm going to give you my top tips for choosing the guitar pick that is right for your style of playing. Stick around to the end because I'm going to share with you a secret guitar pick hack. So when we choose a guitar pick, what we're going to do is we're going to think about the application that it's going to be used for. So if it's an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar, then we have to take that into consideration. We also have to look at the idea that it might be for lead guitar or it might be for rhythm guitar. Now if you're like me, you're going to spend a lot of time trying out different picks, seeing which one feels better to you. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at the different types of picks there are that are out there and what applications those apply to, whether it's acoustic guitar, electric guitar, lead playing or rhythm playing. This is one of those things, this is my thoughts on using a plectrum or a pick. There will be a ton of other opinions out there, so you need to get your hands on as many picks as you can and form your own opinion. Find out what works best for you. Now looking back to when I first started guitar, back in those days, I used to use picks that were far too heavy. And as a result, it meant that I would hit the strings far too hard. And I've even seen a couple of gigs where I played the guitar so hard because adrenaline kicks in that I would snap strings or I would end up with bloodied fingers at the end of a gig. With that in mind, what you need to do is you need to think that if you do play with a heavy pick, you need to be able to lighten up your touch. I've included links in the description of this video should you want to check out these picks and see if they work for you. So let's look at some picks. So the pick that you choose is going to end up defining the tone that you get out of your guitar. That's the first important consideration. Now we're going to talk a bit about the materials that these picks are made of. And like I say, these are the ones that I use. As it turns out, as I go through these, they are all made by Jim Dunlop. The first pick I want to show you is this black XL Jazz 3. Now, these are also known as the Stiffo. These are the Stiffos. Now, there isn't a gauge for the thickness of these, and you will see there is a thickness. So when it comes to looking at a pick, you need to think about the thickness, because the thickness will determine the flexibility of the pick, and therefore, that will suit a better application for playing guitar. So this one here, this is one that I use for pretty much everything. Like I say back in the early days I would use heavier picks than these and break strings end up in a right mess with them but this is the one that I have learned over the years to control everything and to play soft because when you pick too hard you squash the notes and you don't allow the notes to bloom and that's what we're after we want each note that we play to bloom we want it to blossom and to sound really really nice depending on what kind of amplifier you're using if it's an electric guitar that's a another consideration as well. An innocuous little piece of plastic like this connecting with the string has a massive effect on the emotion that you put out through your music. So this is the black stiffo. Now this is the one. Now the thing about this one, if you look at the tip of this pick, you can see it is extremely pointed. This is a freshly minted one. These guys are nylon. They are plastic uh, injection molded. So essentially you will feel the imperfection of the molding as as you go around the edges there but that wears off but you get a nice pointy tip with these and that means when you play the strings it reduces the friction reduces the drag which means you can cross the strings faster so this is always going to be better than this this one has a more pronounced rounded tip I'm going to talk about this one in a minute. That's called the Jazz 3 XL Stiffer. And I happen to like that one because of that pointy tip for lead playing. But it's also great for articulating notes in chords as well. Now, a counterpart to that is another Jazz 3. And it's the same size. It's an XL. And worth noting, yes, these are XLs. There is a version of this that is just a standard Jazz 3. It feels far too small for my fingers. I feel like I'm going to lose it when I'm playing guitar. 
are. So here is the red Jazz 3 XL. Now this one seems to be made of a more softer nylon and I have noticed over time that if I play with this one, these retain their stiffness, probably why they're called a stiffer, whereas the red Jazz 3, what this does is it softens and it becomes a little bit more pliable. These, you do notice that these do bend and cut when you've used them for some time. So that is the Jazz 3 XL. I would rather use one of those, but this, if you prefer a bit more flexibility, this is probably going to be a bit better for you if you want that. So you could think to yourself, that would be electric and that might be for a playing lead stuff on acoustic. Another pick that I'm trying at the moment, because one of the guitar teachers at my school, Ben, he suggested trying these. This is the smaller size, and actually this is somewhere between the size of the Jazz 3 normal, and you can see that it says Jazz 3 on the other side there. This is made of a different material. This is Delrin, which Jim Dunlop called Tortex. That's their name for the material that they use here. Now this is a heavy gauge and you can see if, if I just bend it here you can see there is a degree of flexibility to this. Now the discussion that we've been having about this is the point is lovely because it's nice and sharp so it reduces the friction and the drag on strings but it, because it's a lighter pick, it means you have to play light. And this means that the notes just sound a little bit cleaner, a little bit less compressed. And that's a great pick. So that one is, this one is a Jazz 3 and it's the Tortex. This one happens to be 0.88 gauge. So you've got a gauge on that one. So those are my sort of go-to picks if I was thinking about carrying picks around in my pocket. These are the ones that I generally don't leave the house without. That brings me to another pick. Now if you'll excuse this one, this is pretty road worn is this one. This is my choice of acoustic pick. This is what I would primarily use for acoustic. And like I said, you could use this for acoustic, for acoustic lead. This one would be for an electric lead and probably if you're playing lots of rock stuff then that's a great pick. And this is a great pick as well. So this one is my go-to for strumming chords. And this is a Tortex and you can see it's got this unmistakable yellow color and this is a 73 gauge. So this one here is wonderful for playing rhythm guitar. Now. If I just hold this sideways on and show you the flex on this one, you can see there is more flex on that. So when you hold the pick, there's going to be a lot more give. You've got a lot more give on that, a lot more flexibility. But it's not too flexible so that you lose articulation when you are playing single notes. So this is what I think of as being the best acoustic pick. So this is an acoustic strummer. The problem with these is that these are quite loud. If you have a quite a loud acoustic guitar as it is, then this is going to make a lot of sound. And this is the hack that I was on about, guys. Oh, yeah. The problem is, it's late at night, you want to practice, but you don't want to wake everybody up. Here is my secret weapon for quiet, late night practice, mostly for strumming. It is the USA Nylon 0.38 eight millimeter. This one is so flexible. When you strum, it hardly puts any energy from the strum into the strings, which means the volume is a lot quieter. This reduces the volume of your playing. So if you wanted to practice late into the night, as long as you've got some doors closed and your significant other has their earplugs in, then you can get away with practicing with this one. Now, the thing about this is because it's so flexible, it's pretty down useless at articulating single notes. If you want to do lead stuff with that, then you're going to find it sounds very, very scratchy. So we do that one, that one sounds very, very scratchy. And that is the USA, this, so it's the USA Nylon 0.3 a millimeter gauge. This one is always a telltale to me when I hear this one because if you listen to this one, what happens is it gives you this sort of flappy sound when it's used in recording. That might be something if you are recording late at night and you want to have just the sound of the strings, then you might want to use something like this. But bear in mind that this is going to ha produce way more volume, it's going to be quiet, but you will get a lot more string noise you will hear it and be able to identify the thickness of the pick 
once somebody uses one of these in a recording. Once you've got a pick, then the thing you need to know is how to hold a pick, and I'll show you that in this lesson here. Hey up guys, if you'd like to support my work on YouTube, then please consider purchasing a copy of my book. The book is a compilation of PDFs from all the aha and light bulb moment lessons that you can find here on my YouTube channel, but all in one convenient place. It's available in three formats, a spiral bound copy, a paperback, but if you prefer an ebook for instant download, then you can grab that by clicking the link in this video or going to rickysguitar.com forward slash store to grab your copy.